would like to invite our next speaker, Dr. Dong Li, who is the Deputy Director in the Innovation Center for Technology, uh, Beijing Qinghua Tonghen uh, Urban Planning and the Design Institute. And before this, he has also spent seven years as a senior engineer in China Academy of Urban Planning and the Design. And in recent years, he <coughs> adopted the trend of data-driven planning, testing new data and the tools for various issues in cities, transitioning the planning from a static process into more of a dynamic process. Now, uh, I'm doing the urban planning with, with some uh, data analyze, uh, very in intensive data analyze. So my uh, the uh, in fact, uh, the environment problem, especially the waste problem, is not my major work. So I pick some uh, relevant project to show, to show what we are doing right now, and something uh, maybe you get some inspiration. Okay. And some introduction. My, my company is uh, affiliated with this Tsinghua University. It's purely a uh, urban planning and design institute with more than 1,000 people. So my uh, innovation center is about 50 people. We have half of the planner and half of the uh, data scientists or coder. So we, we are working together to um, get some analysts to support a better plan and a better urban management. So this is our major six kind of uh, work we are doing for different cities in China, like big data consulting, fusion analysis, monitoring, or some policy and valuation kinds of things. It's not just focus on the waste problems, uh, about the population, industry, uh, a little bit comprehensive uh, issues in, in Chinese cities. Um, Chinese term, we call it Chen uh, Shui, okay, uh, city disorders. It's not a, a term in English. I uh, communicate with some uh, um, overseas professions. They do not say this word in English word. I, I don't know. <laughs> and like uh, we call it city disorders in, in China. It's uh, uh, popular in Chinese uh, policy text, like uh, some urban sprawl traffic, environment kind of things. And uh, we have this UN target. <laughs> it's, it's more balanced for the whole whole society, for the for the all human beings. And I think uh, the planet, the term like urban planet, the, the whole city will have more regulation. So we take this um, framework directly for the cities. And uh, on that side, we have more data side, data sources, very quick uh, um, review. Like we have more people and more devices are connected, so we have more data, very increasing, very very fast. Uh, some forecast about the total amount of data accumulated by a human. And uh, besides the data, we also have uh, devices. That means computing capability and also some algorithm or models and sort of this. So uh, with uh, a thing of data uh, machine and uh, models, we can use like, all the information more uh, intelligent. So how about the big data? We see, uh, we see the difference between the, we call it new type of data because uh, the big is very, not very uh, specific. Uh, the traditional data is like some tables or statistics uh, published by the government. So the new type of data like cell phone, internet, uh, open table, you have open table where we have similar company in China, like uh, and TripAdvisor, people comments on the tourist, uh, like the floating bike, like taxi, all the data come uh, related to the city problem. So they have higher frequency, uh, finer gravity, and richer property. That's a major difference between the new type of data and the traditional data. So the first case is an uh, uh, article uh, we published like uh, maybe four years ago, uh, different version, because we talk about little different. We, uh, we evaluated the uh, old uh, effect 
for uh, each lens used in China with social media data and uh, lens scan data. So I just go through this um, uh, article. The, the three major work of this article is about the way uh, I mentioned the H2S emission. So we can calculate the range of the O's which maybe use merit. We use two different uh, models like Gaussian disparation model and uh, one to cut off more specific uh, uh, dispersion model. And then my part is <laughs> in that uh, I use social media data which contains the location and context content information to validate the range of the uh, orders. Okay. So this is all the picture of all the land fields uh, nearly 2,000 land fields, 1,955 land fields in China. Uh, it's, it's from my calls, <laughs> it's not from me. So you can see the different uh, side of circle uh, because we estimation the H2S emission. Um, they cover about uh, um, a very little part of the China's land uh, territory. And uh, the range, the calculation with the average radius of the range is about 800 meters. And this part is about social media. We, we uh, extract the social media with the content of land view and us, uh, like, like scenes of this. Uh, so to, uh, to say uh, where the social media occurred. Like the first one is Guangdong province, Guangdong, Beijing, Zhejiang province, and the campaign. Sorry, I cannot translate this picture. It's all about the topics and the words. And person are talking about the land fields uh, when they are using social media. So the, the left uh, the right part is you see the red right circle. That's the result of Gaussian dispersion. And the green part, more specific, from copper. Uh, that's the result. I'm not going to that detail. And the, you see this map. Every red, uh, sorry, yellow dot is a social media. So we collect all of the social media to say, to say uh, the distance between the land fields and uh, where people may uh, post in a social media post. Uh, so it's very interesting uh, math, which we can uh, evaluate the out and effect. Uh, the first one is Beijing, Gaowantun, land field. And this is Nanjing. Changing Greek, it's a mountain, and people come to the mountain, but just behind the mountain, there is a land field. So. <coughs> and we also use another data set, it's a land scan from NASA. It's a population uh, data set for every uh, kilometer square. And so we could, uh, to say, the old effect. Uh, how many people are in, in China and uh, what kind of the people has been affected. So we have this big issue. The, the land scan is more uh, statistic. That means the population is just a number. And the social media, we say, is more dynamic because you know uh, where and when the post has been, um, has appeared, uh, has appeared on the internet. So you see the ratio and the land carving about the range and the carbon range um, containing how many population of statistic and dynamic. So we see the effect something interesting. And then I read another article to use that uh, um, how do I say to use that relationship we want to make a tour for planners. That means if we know the effect, how could we plan the uh, facility better? Because we are we work, working for the planning institute. So the major uh, work is we use different uh, um, population, which we have mentioned, the land scan and geotagging social media. And for, we, we have to evaluate two things. One is the overall pattern in a city about the land fields. 
and for every uh, for each facility, uh, say each specific uh, facility, how uh, how the uh, is located a good uh, location or bad location, and we can compare different uh, facilities within different cities in China because we use the same data set. So this is Beijing and Shanghai. I take these two cities for example. All the uh, green dots, very very density, they are social media. So you see where the people uh, active, they, they could post uh, social media because we collect uh, social media for a long time. And the um, black one is the uh, land view, uh, land views. So this is uh, basic data, and we get a uh, very, very simple model that inverse distance weightings. That means if you have more people near the land fields, the, the score is much lower. It's a very simple idea. And all of the data has been spatially joined to a um, grid. And then here's some uh, here are some results and I, I'm not going very deeply to that. So I can share this paper. Uh, unfortunately, it's in Chinese. <laughs> okay, we see two two lines. One is the uh, dash dot line, and another is um, and the up up um, chart is Beijing, and the below chart is Shanghai. So generally, if if you near the um, uh, one one line is a medium medium value, and another is average. So. If you near the land fields, the media is always much higher than the average. That means some uh, land fields, very few land fields, they affect a lot of people, so makes the um, average much higher than the media value. And we can have a ranking of the two cities. The first, the ranking, the first one is the uh, Shanghai uh, Laogang land field, and the second one is. Beijing Fontai, so we can compare different land fields in different cities. Okay, the, the second case, we do a proposal. It, it's not a uh, it's not a project. It's a proposal for competition. Okay, we do a competition proposal for Wuhan urban similar lab. We propose a city greenhouse gas grid management platform. So the most uh, uh, work is about this full and point. And first, we have state of art GHG inventory for cities. That come from my co-author, so so I'm, I'm I'm not going to the details. And uh, he is a uh, expert. And we have some control of the quality of GHG estimation uh, because he is working for the Ministry of Environment, so he gets some data from the online monitoring devices, so he can control the, um, control the quality of the data simulation. So, and my part is about to make an interactive um, system. We can analyze all the results. We make a final graduate to grid in Wuhan, which means the spatial is much smaller, about one kilometer, and the time is every month, so we can update the data. For every mouse, and the interface is much more modern and uh, uh, very easy to use. Analyzing, visualizing uh, different uh, indicators in Wuhan, different kind of the GHG, like from industry or from uh, residential or from agriculture. And you can do some analyze by AD Hawk. That means you just click and get the result. Uh, we can see the Hot cold area of GHG emission. Some parts, some parts of the grid are very high, and some parts are very cold, very low. And we can see the pattern generalized. Uh, I just click the mouse. Okay, so we have some other cases. It's, it's not directly related to waste, so I, I go into forest. We collect a lot of data and uh, internet street view. Uh, which the Google map has a street view, and in China we have Baidu and the Google map they have street view, and we can analyze the content of the picture to see what's on the street, the building, the 
colors or the skies, the ratio, uh, how many ratio in, appear in the picture. And the dock is floating bike, which means no bike or OFO. Uh, different bikes that have traffic uh, moving around the cities. And uh, like uh, this is people are jumping, they are running. Uh, people are like running in Beijing. And after the run, after they have the excitement, they, they share the tragedy on social media. And, and then we got this tragedy and uh, trajectory to, to analyze where they have uh, often runs. So this is a map. And uh, we can analyze to combine the uh, trajectory and the street view to see where, pe uh, where people are more like to have exercise uh, outside. So there are some, uh, uh, some results we use the geo de detector. Geo so detector is a method which you can detect uh, which factors are more important uh, to your uh, attributes. Uh, the, the attribute is the amount of running or amount of biking. Like a proportion of the sky, people are like to uh, have exercise also uh, at the open space and uh, distance from the green, that kind of the uh, factors. And uh, even we, we also have some, we set up the monitoring by ourselves uh, to get some uh, um, air, co uh, air quality or we can count the people and count the uh, vehicles at a very old district in, in Beijing. And then we do some platform like a visualization on a very huge screen. Uh, Chinese people like this, especially for, for people in government. Uh, they, uh, we have different examples and uh, So we combine all of the information for their decision making to support their decision making to do some uh, analyze on the talk. Okay, uh, some final remarks. First, I, I, I see the triangle posted by Paul. Yeah, there are triangle system data and uh, decision making, but I see this more like a loop. loop. Uh, so it's observation, orientation, decision making, action. So we want to make uh, a closed loop, closed loop, which you mentioned in your PowerPoint. And for the data, we get perception, measurement, mining or analyzing, and simulation. So it's another data loop. So all of our work is want to make it more a closed loop for the city issues. And the first remark is a term like a CPS, it's a cyber physical system, uh, which we have physical environment like cities. And we have some virtual uh, cycle, cycle space comparing all of the data. And the city has some difficulty to use the data because the border is open. You cannot draw a line of the city. So it is border. The mechanism is uh, not clear. So we have to make the connection to make more power of data for support the uh, um, physical uh, improvement. The second is, uh, we say the IT and the DT is totally different. Okay. IT system is uh, made by collecting and communicating, but we are doing some analysis That's for the data technology. We want to use data to uh, support decision making to see the uh, consequences uh, behind the indicators. That's that's how I say it's uh, data technology. And uh, the uh, last remark is data or say AI is not uh, online. <laughs> it has a lot of uh, shortcuts. So we, we uh, see these words like augmented intelligence. Uh, it's much better. AI is used for help our to have better thinking about the city. Okay, thank you.